This tutorial video is part of a series that I am doing to help you learn more about the cadence blocks and how you can use the cadence blocks to create amazing pages on your website. So in this tutorial video, I am specifically looking at the row block and this is one of my favorite cadence blocks. So to start with, to add a row block to your website or to your page, all you need to do is to click on this plus icon or to click up here at the top and choose row layout. Once you choose row layout, it will then ask you to select your layout and the row layout you can see here, it's got one column, two columns, etc., all the way up to six columns. And then there's also a button here whereby you can click and have a look at a design library. Um, there is a whole bunch of sections that you can pull in and starter packs as well um, that you can quickly and easily use to create amazing pages on your website. So to start with, I'm just going to choose one column. Here we go. And once I have the row block layout open, you will see the block changes on the right hand side. And this is where we are going to start customizing the row. Now, if you choose a row block and you decide that actually you would rather have two columns or three columns within that row, you can change that up by just coming here and sliding up and down and choosing the number of columns that you would like on your row or in your row. Now, as you slide up and down, you'll see down below the layout changes. So you can quickly and easily select the percentage of each column. So here we've got kind of uh, left heavy, right heavy, um, top, bottom, and then you've got the second, which is the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth columns. So you've got different layouts depending on how many columns you choose. And if you have more than one column, then underneath you've got your column gutter, and this is basically the spacing around your columns. It's standard, it's set to 30 pixels. If you want, you can change this, and there are different options, so there's no, 10, 20, 40, 60, and 80 pixels as well. Okay, so just one thing I want to show you is on the, in the cadence blocks, you'll often see these little icons. Here's a desktop icon, a tablet icon, and a mobile icon. So if I click on the tablet, it changes, and I can then start to manipulate how the row and the columns look depending on a tablet device or an iPad or something like that. So that's a tablet. And then here it's mobile. So again, I can set the column, how the column looks on a mobile device. So here I've specifically chosen four columns. I can then decide on um, a mobile, I want it to look like this, or I want it to be stacked on top of each other. And I want it to have no gutter. But on a desktop, it will look like this and it will have a gutter of 30 pixels. Okay, so when you start to look at your page um, on your desktop, you can create it and then you want to just review it on a tablet, see that it looks good and on a mobile device and you can start to manipulate how it looks on a tablet and how it looks on a mobile device by clicking on these two icons here. So let's carry on looking at how to work with the row layout on a desktop. Okay, so the next option we have here is your padding and your margin. So your padding is within the row, if you want some spacing within the row, and your margin is outside the row, so above and below. And it's always good in web design to give your website and your sections space to breathe. So giving it space above and below is always a good option. And obviously, this really depends on what you are creating. So I generally create the row, update it, have a look on the front end, and then add in the margins and the, the padding. Okay, so the next option is your background settings. And this is where you can set a background color, a slider, a video, or an image. Okay, so you can set a color by coming here, clicking on select color, and you can choose one of your global palettes here, your colors from your global palette, and you set this global color palette 
in the Cadence Customizer section. Uh, otherwise, you can just come here and you can select a color. Um, there's also this really handy reset button. If I click that, it goes back to transparent. So the next thing is you can set a background image. So you can either choose an image from your media library, upload one from your desktop, or insert one from a URL. So I'm gonna select an image from my library. So let's say for example, this lemon image. So let's click select. And then I can scroll down and then I can choose the image sizing as well. Before I show you the image sizing, there's also this focal point. So depending on the height of your row, you can change the focal point of your image by just clicking and dragging on this. Okay. So the background image sizing, you've got cover that stretches your image. This contains your image, which is really nice if you're doing kind of a pattern. So you can click repeat and you can see that repeats my image. I can also repeat X and I can repeat Y. And this will only really show up when your row is a certain height. And then you have auto. And this will then just make sure that the image is um, the size that you uploaded it. So I'm going to keep it as cover. And then once you have chosen your background image, you do have options of the attachment. So scroll is just where it is static. Fixed is when the content kind of slides over it and parallax is when you, um, when you scroll through that image, um, you, it kind of, goes from the top of the image to the bottom. I'm sure you have seen a parallax image before and you can force the background image in line. Okay. Then let's look at the slider options. So if you want, um, you can have um, a slideshow behind your content in the front. So let's say, for example, we want two slides. Um, I can either have a slide background color. So let's go with blue. And this one, I'm going to select an image. So let's go with my lemon image. Um, I'm going to cover that. I can also set the position of it. I can set the speed of the slideshow. Um, and if I want the image to repeat, I can do that as well. And then transition styles, you've got fade or slide. And if you want an arrow, you can add that in and you can also add in a dot style. So I'm going to click update. And then let's have a view of this page. And you can kind of see I've got the dots there and I can now see I've got a slider. Okay. So this is really nice if you want a slideshow behind and you have text in the front. So you can see this in action on yard 41 site. It's got a little slider and you can see these little dots at the bottom. Um, I'm sure most people probably won't see those, but this just automatically goes through those images. Now let's go on to the next settings. The next settings are your background overlay settings. So if you want, you can add in a color over your background, or you can even add a image over your background. So let me show you here. And the overlay color is really great if you have say some text or a button or something that's really hard to read. So I'm gonna go back here. And I'm going to set this to one column and in there, I'm going to add in advanced text and I'm going to just write heading okay? and I'm going to center align that and make it white. And then I'm going to come back to my row layout. And when this slides through to the next one, it will be quite hard to read. So when we look at our background overlay settings, it's quite hard to read. We're going to add maybe a black color and we've set the opacity here. So that's how transparent it is. I might increase this a bit to about 60%. And once it goes through, let's update and refresh on the side. We can see now there's kind of a dark color overlaid. Now, again, when we look at Yard 41 site, you can see I've got an overlay, a really dark overlay color 
over those slider images, which makes this a lot easier to read and the top section, the menu section with the logo easier to see as well. So you can also do a gradient. So if you wanted a gradient with a different color, you can change the opacity, you can change the color, you can change um, the gradient type as well. And you can, so with linear as well, you can change the gradient angle. So there's lots of different options you can play around with in terms of your background color and your background images. So I'm just closing these settings here and going on to the next setting. So the next setting is your border setting. You can set the border color by choosing global palette or choosing a color here. Um, and you can set the border width. So let's say 10 pixels. Um, if you want, you can set it by each side or if you click on this button, it links them and then that's when I can do them all at once. Likewise with the border radius, as you can see, it's like this. If I click this button, I can then choose that to be zero and then it starts to look like that. Okay, so let's move on to the next setting, which is your dividers. I love this. You can have a divider at the top or the bottom and there are several different um, divider options. So let's click on this drop down here. You can see these divider options. So like kind of a slanted over kind of circle, etc. Um, so let's choose this one. I can, I can then, um, choose the divider colors. So I'm going to go with this blue color here. I can then choose the divider height and as I mentioned before, remember when you see these little icons, it's like a desktop, a tablet and a mobile. You can set different customizer settings depending on the device. So when you click on that, I can then change the height depending on my tablet and change my height depending on my mobile device. So it's always good for you to check what things are looking like on other devices. I can then set the divider width. And I can come here and I can choose a top divider. So let's choose this one. Hmm, which one should we choose? That one. And I can choose the color here. It's black. And then again, height and divider width as well. And I can choose what it looks like on a tablet and a mobile device. Okay, moving on to the next option is your text color settings. So if you want, you can set specific colors for the whole of that row. So when you add in advanced text or any text, then it automatically changes to white or changes to black, whatever you've chosen here, or you can specifically set the colors in, say, for example, your advanced heading. Then you've got your link colors and your link hover colors. Again, you can click here, choose from your global color palette, or you can select a specific color there. Then your structure settings here, your container HTML tag. You don't really need to worry about that. If you're a beginner to cadence, what you need to look at is the minimum height. So you can either have your row as automatic. So whatever you put into there, that will determine the height of your row. So that's top to bottom. Um, otherwise you can set the height here by just scrolling. And as you can see, it makes that row a specific height. So if you just wanted a parallax image and there was no content in it, you would see Set this minimum height and then you can obviously update and then look at your blog on the front end and see if you like that height or you don't like that height um, and then adjust accordingly and again you've got your desktop your mop your tablet and your mobile there okay the next thing is your content maximum width so that is the space that it's going to take up from left to right um, if you have gone into cadence and you have chosen a full width template, then the content will go all the way from the left to the right. And when it comes to uh, a, a customer or a user experience and the content's going all the way from the left to the right, it's very difficult for them to read. So it's always good to leave white space on the left and the right. So we'll do that by either clicking on this 
and then that will choose the maximum width it will be inherit from the theme and you will set that in appearance customize otherwise you uncheck that and you can set it here okay so let me show you that in action so i'm going to press enter i'm going to do an advanced text i am just going to copy this from the yard 41's website and i'm going to paste that in there let's just make this paragraph text and center align it okay so let's go back to our row and we can see let's update this and refresh we can see that's there now if we start to change this and we click update and we click refresh that then brings the content in okay so that is your your content max width now the next thing is if you have two columns and you want them to be the boat both, both of the columns to be the same height you simply toggle this and then that will make sure that both columns are the same height and the other thing that you want to look look at when you have two columns or more um, and you have them as the same height you can also align them um, align the content at the top the middle and the bottom okay so let me show you how that works so if I go to a row and I say two columns okay um, I'm just going to add in some text here as well okay and I am going to come to my row layout again go to my structure settings I have made the inner column height 100% um, the content is now set to the top okay I can also align it centered click update and refresh and now all the content is now in the middle of the page so if I set it to align bottom click update and refresh then everything is at the bottom of that column now the last setting in your structure settings is your Z index control so if you create a row and one below that and they kind of overlap you can set which one should be on top of the other by simply clicking on this and all you need to do is just make sure that it is a higher number than the one below okay so now we're going to look at your visibility settings so you can set whether that row um, shows on a desktop on a tablet a mobile etc or whether it shows for logged in users only or for logged out users then the next tab is your custom css if you're new to cadence blocks you might not be using this but if you want to style this specifically you can give it a selector and then you can um, add in the rules and then you've got your advanced um, and this is where you can give something an html um, anchor tag um, so you might have seen this where in a menu you click on an option and then it goes to a specific point in a page so you'll basically give it like specials and then in the menu you'll link to this by going uh, putting in a hash and then specials there is an article here that shows you more about anchor tags and then if you want to style things a little bit more um, you can add in custom css classes remember when you make any changes to your row um, and you want it to go live on your website you do need to click update here um, or you can switch it to a draft and save it as a draft and then work on it in the back end okay so that is the process of using the cadence row blocks this is number one in the series of using cadence blocks to create dynamic page layouts on your website